this enter into the moment that we are going to be having today. We're going to enter into a moment of intense worship, moment of intense praise, that the servant of the Lord has already been anointed with the word that is of season. So we ask you to stay tuned and continue to start those watch parties with us. May God bless you even as we continue on with the service. So right now we're just going to head straight to the praise and worship and may God bless you even as you begin and continue to join us. In Jesus' name we have started. Amen, amen, amen.
somebody. I want you to help me pray even when you're seated at home. And even us in the church, I want us to lift up a cry and announce in the name of Jesus that there cannot exist any other person that is going to pervert the grace that has been given unto us by our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to tell you, because of this gospel, somebody gave his life. So we are not going to take it for granted. We announce in the name of Jesus that every diabolical altars are now being silenced in the name of Jesus. We announce that every altar speaking anything contrary to the word of God right now is being silenced in the name of Jesus. We announce that the airwaves can only accommodate that which is the word of God. Hear me? The airwaves can only accommodate news of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. We silence every other form of evil world that has been raised as a sound and we raise a new sound in this season. We say a gospel must be authentic. The word of God must be authentic. We silence every other altar. Speaking of things we do not understand. My God, I pray this gospel will not be perverse. My God, I announce the gospel will not be perverse. Rasa takabakata. Rasa takabakata. Adele basata. Rakato rabasata. Makantes kate. Libra sonto kanama. Asintos kapi kate kate. Lepro is kate kate. Mampro is kate kate. It will not be perverse. It will not be perverse. Asato labasata. Rebecca santa labo. Shiana mama mosaka. Hallelujah, Lord. So as we come to an end, in, a, in verse number 23, the same book of Galatians, we see the Bible says, and Paul tells him that you only heard that the one that persecuted now is preaching the gospel. I want to tell you the truth, that there was a former man that persecuted, but there is a new man that is going to preach the gospel. I want to pray right now that there, we were in the former times when men were rebellious to that which is of God. But in this season we are announcing a raising of men that have changed their ways because of the encounter. May you enter into a season where where you will preach the gospel seasoned with the salt where you will preach the word of God even as God has called you may every altar that is not of God be now silenced in Jesus mighty name how we love you Lord and we honor you in Jesus name we pray amen 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 I'm going to welcome Pastor Wick to just continue from there God bless you as you continue to watch. Amen. 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 Let's just continue in that mode of prayer. Hallelujah. De basonda, de basoria na mande. De la busa, de basonda, le paroske taena masosia. Perebo se li basonda, e pacusta de bahande. E parosa, li basandura picande. E perusa, si la mahande. E paroposi kayasa susa. E perosi rapayando posia. Isa sose, si sa pura dia magande. E parosa se payusa dia. Perebosa, si da lobo si kayande. E parasisa, si sa bosca. E mendula visa. Dolia Pagande, a payaso so poriba sandeca, e perosi la mahande, e ratosia bancanta la basose, e parosi la busque telebesua, e telebo si andaga, raposi cantalebo si antaya bagande, e parosi sa susa senseria na mande, e talobo si kayasa sa susento, e perosi na na mande, e perosi andala bagonde. E perosi sa custa riente pero e parosi sa susa e parosa si se son sa rianta mande.
Sosa Sapa, Imparase Zodia, Impregento Liva Sandolia, Arande Begosia, Empesa Susaria Tapayo, Araba Baba Bose, Emparosa Sisa Susa, Imparonda Liva Santa Liva Suske, Ashayana Baga, Edron Payaso, Sia Talabagande. I would have you know that there are times when the second is better than the first because the second Adam, the last Adam, was better than the first Adam. The second covenant was better than the first covenant. And we rejoice today knowing that we are partakers of a covenant that, that is not between us and God, that be, but is between God and his son Jesus, whom he has made partakers of. And I want to declare and decree over your life that by virtue of this new covenant, may all that the covenant carries be appropriated to you. May all that the New Testament provides as a provision for the saints of God be made available to you. May grace without measure, grace that is unmerited favor, that is divine enablance, that is the power of God come upon you right now. May this grace that causes us to function May this grace that gives us access, the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 5, that, 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 we, that, that this grace gives us access to faith in which we stand. So if it's not by the grace of God, there is no access. If it was not by this grace that comes from Christ, there will be no access. So now by grace, may men begin to receive access to the place of dominion. May men begin to receive access to their dominion. I declare a decree over your life right now. May grace be made available for you to enter into your place of dominion. Child of God, I'd have you to know that heaven is not a destination. So we should stop using escapism theology, thinking that heaven is going to be a place that is going to be better and all we want to do is run away to go to heaven. Child of God, heaven was created for victors. Heaven is just a part of the journey. It is not the destination, but it is part of the journey. So let us not use heaven as a means to escape dominion. Jesus Christ came to die that man may be restored to dominion. So I declare over you right now, may grace be made available for you to go back into your place of dominion. You are created to dominate. You are created to dominate. And right now, by the power of God, may the spirit of resurrection, this spirit that raised Christ from the dead, this spirit that makes us alive and sits us together with him in the heavenly realms, may this spirit make you alive in Christ and give you the power to dominate. Emperosia Payakata, Emperosia Tayamagonda, Emperusa Yanta, Emperosa Liamagande, Erama Susa Yatolia, Emperusa Sisa Susa, Emperatola Payata, Emperosa Sia Pacante, Elepria Susa Yanda. May you rise to your place of dominion. Father. We pray over the church. And Father, we pray that may you begin to raise men in the church that are going to rise to take dominance over the world. May you raise men in the church that are going to dominate over governance. May we come to a place where it is the church advising the state, where it is the church that runs the government and not the government that runs the church. Oh God, may you arise and cause your kingdom to take dominion. This kingdom that is the authority, that is the power, Basilia, may the power of your kingdom that which we are belonging in take root on the earth. 
The Bible tells us that we are ambassadors of his kingdom. So our biggest roles as Christians is to effect that kingdom on earth. So may you begin to rise in the place of dominion, over governance, over education, over family, over religion, over arts and entertainment, over media, over all things, commerce. May men begin to rise from the church that are going to dominate in the area of commerce. See, many a times we quote the scripture that says that, 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 that the wealth of the wicked is going to be transferred to the sons of God. But let me tell you, transfer does not just come in the place of prayer. Transfer comes when children of God arise in the marketplace and begin to provide solutions. God created you as a solution and the world will pay you for the solutions that you bring. Right now, we begin to pray over people in business. Let there be a grace. Let there be a power. Let there be an action and a commissioning over your life. May the Holy Ghost begin to give you ideas that you will cause you to go into the marketplace and begin to bring forth solutions, begin to bring forth strategies, begin to bring forth answers that are going to be required. And by this aroma, Jesus, by these solutions, may God cause you to make such wealth for the kingdom. God cause you to begin to get solutions uh, that you will provide uh, so that he will be glorified. Uh, I tell you, uh, God is not just glorified uh, when sons comes to his light. Uh, God is not just glorified uh, when we come to church on Sunday, but God is glorified uh, when his children uh, stand in the place of dominion uh, and begin to overcome uh, the systems of the world. tells us that the original dominion of the earth was given to man. That's why God spoke to Adam in the beginning and told him may you, may you have dominion over the birds of the air, the air kingdom, over the fish of the sea, the water kingdom, over the, the, the creeping things that creep on the earth, the land kingdom. God told Adam I have given you dominion but when Adam sinned Dominion was handed over to the devil. But when Jesus Christ came, he came to restore man to his dominion. And that is why, child of God, heaven is not a place where we will want to run to. When we understand, we are made to dominate. And I pray over you right now. May this power to witness, the power that comes over children of God, cause you to go into the marketplace and witness God by your acts. See, we call them the acts of the apostles. Why were these acts of the apostles great? Because these acts were done by men that were under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Father, we pray, oh God, in these days and times that may your spirit fill us once again. May your spirit fill us once again. May you cause us to really understand the purpose of your redemption. That man was given dominion and by redemption he was restored back to the place of dominion. Holy Ghost, you're the spirit of the Father. You're the spirit of purity, oh God. May you come back to your church. May you come back to us. Holy Spirit, teach us your ways. Teach us your kingdom. Teach us how to operate. Holy Ghost. May
back to your church. I need to just come. May you come back to your church. Holy Spirit, we even welcome you into this service. We welcome you to have your way. Take preeminence over this service, oh God. That let it not be just service as usual. But let this service be built on your power. Let this service institute the principles of your kingdom. That your children may begin to dominate. May begin to rise in their places of authority and power. Oh, Holy Ghost. service. 
you guys to help me welcome all the way from home. None other than Pastor Ken. Pastor Ken is going to come and give us the word today. He's the man that is seasoned by grace this morning to give us the word. Great greetings from our pastor, Pastor Tim Wangi. And I know that today our lives shall never be the same again. Shall never be the same again. So welcome, welcome Pastor Ken. Hallelujah. We appreciate you, Lord. Mazo zaki kaya namagandos, reko zeke takabigandos. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for that which you've intended to speak to us this wonderful morning. We we subject ourselves even to Thy leadership and to Thy Lordship, Holy Spirit. That you will speak to us even in a language that we will be able to understand in simple ways. In the name of Jesus Christ, Spirit of the living God. Gazande, zande ya megandas. Gazande, mendi ya kandayas. Matosa kia na magendas. Randi ya meza tisa magandis. Katosi katika minda se katabagandis. Thank you, Spirit of the Living God. Thank you, Spirit of the Living God. I just want to go straight to the Word of God, as you have heard. My name is Pastor Ken, and I'm glad to be bringing the Word of God to you this wonderful morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, uh, I want to speak about a subject, about a subject that I have that, that I'm that I'm calling the power of resurrection. This is, this is a word that God has been speaking to me the, the entire of this month. And I remember the, the first day that I, that, I, that I preached. That was when you were beginning the month, the, the month of June. Uh, we, we, spoke, we spoke about the cross. And God has been speaking to me about resurrection. And I want the entirety of the message of the cross because... The message of the cross is in three dimensions. There is, there is, there is the what happened to Jesus Christ when he was here on earth. There is also what happened to him when he was at the cross. And there is what, what happened and now when, when it comes to his resurrection. And today I want to dwell in the place of his resurrection. Because the message of resurrection is a very powerful message that we as believers are supposed to understand if we have to walk in victory in our Christian life. The message of resurrection is a message that each and every believer needs to understand if we have to walk in dominion. Because the place of dominion is starts or commences in our understanding of what of what happened after Jesus Christ resurrected from the dead. And because this the power, the power that, that we speak about today, the power that we speak about today, it it, it, it emanates or it is. We, we start seeing it after Jesus has resurrected from the dead. And I want to read a scripture in the book of, in the book of Acts. In the book of Acts 2 from verses 13. The Bible says, the book of Acts that but he was, brothers, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried. And his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. See. What was ahead, he spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to the grave, nor did his body see decay. God has raised 
this Jesus to life and we all we are all witnesses of the fact exalted to the right hand of God he has received from the father the promised holy spirit and has poured out what you now see and and hear for david did not ascend to heaven yet he said the lord said to my lord sit at my right hand until i make your enemies a footstool for your feet this is this is this is peter speaking about about the prophecy that had been given in the old testament and the prophecy had been spoken by the patriarch David. And before we can even get to this, I want to start simply because when we are talking about the power of resurrection, some of us may not understand what is resurrection. Because resurrection in simple terms is causing to rise from the dead. Causing to rise from the dead or rising up causing to rise from the dead. And I want you to understand something before we can delve deeper, that there are, there are three resurrections. There are three resurrections. The first resurrection is the past resurrection. The second resurrection is the present resurrection. And the third resurrection is the future resurrection. When we talk about the past resurrection, we are talking about the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. When we talk about the present resurrection, we are talking about the resurrection, the spiritual resurrection of believers, the, the, the present spiritual resurrection of believers. When we talk about future resurrection, we are talking about the resurrection of all dead men from their graves. And today, I want us to dwell on the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the resurrection, the present resurrection, that is the spiritual resurrection of believers. Because we are talking about revival in this day. And I want to let you know the word revival, actually it's like the same word, is like the same word, resurrect. Because the word revival is being awakened. It is someone that was alive and now that person is in a state of deadness and that person receives something that brings them back to life. And when we talk about the resurrection, the past resurrection, that is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is what Peter is speaking about in the book of Acts 2. In the book of Acts 2 from verses 30. This was an Old Testament prophecy. And Peter, when he has risen up in the day of Pentecost, he rises up and tells these people that this thing that you are seeing, that brothers, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Who is one of his descendants? We see the Bible sometimes called Jesus the son of David. So Jesus, this was a prophecy about Jesus Christ. And Jesus was a descendant who was to be on the throne. That is the throne of David. We see also a prophecy been given to David that your throne will will no, will never cease a man to sit on it. So when we see this prophecy, we are seeing the fulfillment of it when Jesus comes in the scene or when Jesus comes on the scene. And now he speaks and says, seeing what will happen, seeing what was ahead, he spoke of his resurrection. The patriarch David was a prophet and seeing what will happen, he speaks of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He speaks of the resurrection of the Christ that he was not abandoned to the grave nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life 
and we are all witnesses of that fact. The truth is, many people will say so many things about Jesus Christ. Many people may not believe because they are faith that do not believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And the reason why it is very important for us as believers to believe in his resurrection. It is because one, we need to understand that he resurrected. And that is why I am, I am forming this background to show you that for sure Jesus Christ resurrected. When you, when you look at the Bible in the book of 1 Corinthians, the book of 1 Corinthians 15, 20, the Bible says, but Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of who have fallen asleep, but Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. And that means that Christ is no longer in the grave. My Akasomagandis. Christ, the person that they hung on a tree and then he was taken to the grave by Joseph of Arimathea, the grave that that he bought Masia Bagandis. I love, I love a song by Elevation Worship that sings and says that the tube was borrowed for three days, but on the third day, Kazo Bagandis, our God robbed the grave and he took out Jesus from that grave. So today, I want you to understand our Savior is not in the grave. Our Savior is seated at the right hand of the Father. My God, Sianamagandos. The Bible says in the book of Matthew, the book of Matthew, I'm just forming a background just to show you that Christ is risen and he is no longer in the grave. The book of Matthew 28, verses 1, the Bible says, after the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were, were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has a reason just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him now I have told you, my whole Zakataba Gandhis. You see, this, this, this is explanation of what happened when the angel of the Lord came at the tomb and made sure that Jesus has risen from the dead. So when we talk about the past resurrection, we've, we've already seen that Jesus has risen from the dead. Jesus has already risen from the dead. And before, before we can continue, I want to show you something. I want to show you, because I want to show you the importance of this resurrection. The importance of the resurrection of Christ and why we as believers are supposed to believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I want to show you because, because one of the things that is happening in our churches today, the, the, the lack of understanding of the importance of resurrection or the lack of understanding the message of the gospel and the part of it which is resurrection. We have so many believers that are living defeated lives not because of anything but because they don't understand the entirety of the message of the gospel and the entirety of the power that was released after Jesus raised, was raised from the dead. The importance of resurrection. One of the things that I want you to know. That if Jesus 
be not resurrect from the dead. Our preaching could be in vain. The Bible says, when you go to the book of 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 15 from verses 13, the Bible says, Kasusa Baganis. The book of 1 Corinthians 15 from verses 13, the Bible says, if there is no resurrection of the dead, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless. And so is our faith. If there was no, the reason why the resurrection of Jesus Christ is very important is because of what Paul is speaking to the church of Corinth and he is telling them if, if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless and so is our faith. Our believing in God is useless if there was no the raising of Jesus from the dead. Our preaching is in vain. The reason why we are preaching today is because he is the reason. The reason why we have faith today is because he is the reason. That is why it is important for us as believers to believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. One of the things, one of the importances of resurrection. We see it in the book of Romans 10, 19. The, the, the book of Romans 10 from verses 9, sorry. This is what the Bible says. Rasa katabagandis. Thank you, spirit of the living God. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So for you to become a true believer, you must confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. Believe in your heart that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. For us to become True believers is one of the most important part of understanding resurrection. The importance of resurrection will enable you, will make us true believers. And our believing in the message of resurrection will make us true believers. That we must believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. This Jesus that was crucified. When we believe that he was raised from the dead from our hearts. We are saved. And that is where. This is actually where. This is the main, the main scripture that many evangelists and many ministers and men of God use when they are leading so many of us in salvation. That confess with your mouth and believe with your heart that Jesus was risen from the dead. So for you to become a true believer, you must believe in your heart that Jesus has been risen from the dead. The second thing that I want you to understand is the, the message or resurrection is part of the gospel message. It's part of the message of the gospel. The Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians, the book of 1 Corinthians 15, from verses 14. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit of the living God. When you read the book of 1 Corinthians 15, from verses 1, the Bible says, Now, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel, you are saved. If you hold firmly to the word I preached to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. For what I received, I passed on to you of first important that Christ died for our sins 
according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures and that he appeared to Peter then to the twelve. He appeared to Peter then to the twelve. So whatever Paul is trying to tell the church of Corinth is he is trying to, to, to pass to them that listen my, listen my brothers that I want to remind you that the gospel that I am preaching to you is the gospel that I have is which I have taken stand on and by this gospel by this gospel you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preach to you otherwise you have believed in vain and that which he received is what he is passing to us. And what did he receive? He received the message that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was, raised, he was buried and then he was raised from the dead. That is the message that Paul is passing to the church of Corinth. And that is why I am saying the message of resurrection, the message of resurrection is part of the gospel message. The message of resurrection, the third thing, confirms that Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ is the son of God. It confirms that Jesus Christ is the son of God. That is Romans 1 from verses 4. The book of Romans 1 from verses 4, it helps us confirm that Jesus Christ is the son of God and was declared to be the son of God in power according to the spirit of holiness by his resurrection from the dead. Jesus Christ our Lord. Let's, we can start from verses 1 so that we understand this particular scripture. In the name of Jesus Christ. This is Paul that is speaking to the church of Romans. And he tells them, Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, verses 3, concerning his son who was descended from David according to the flesh. My God, and was declared to be the Son of God in power according to the Spirit of holiness by His resurrection from the dead. By the resurrection from the dead, we see the confirmation that Jesus was the Son of God. The message of resurrection is very important, it helps us confirm that Jesus for sure was the son of God and Paul confirms this to us. The other thing that I, that, that I want you to understand is that resurrection confirms that he is supreme over all things. That Christ, Christ's supremacy is above all things. Christ is supreme over all things. We look at the book of Ephesians 1 from verses 20. Masakara Bagandis. The Bible says that he walked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand. If we can get it in Amplified, I would appreciate Masakora Bagandis. There is something that I want us to see in the, in the amplified version. Which he exalted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named above every title that can be conferred not only in this age and in the and in this world but also in the age and the world which is to come verses 22 
and he has put all things under his feet and has appointed him the universal and supreme head of the church, a headship exercised throughout the church because of him being resurrected from the dead as we've seen in verses 20. We have seen that he has been conferred the supreme over all things. The Bible says, and he has been put all, all things have been put under his feet and has appointed him the universal and supreme head of the church, a headship exercised throughout the church. Child of God, understanding the importance of the message of resurrection will cause deliverance in your life will cause you to walk in dominion, will cause you to walk in power. And that is my, my assignment here today because I want as I leave you, you will not remain the same person that you are. You will not remain walking in fear as you've been walking in fear. You will not continue walking in the, in the, in the things that you've been walking under and you will not continue being in subjection of some bondages that you are in. But the Lord... When we, when we are getting to the end, we are believing God by the understanding of the message and the importance of resurrection. We shall be shifted from one level to another. We shall be shifted from the place of fear to the place of power. We shall be shifted from the place that we are in, the lowly places, and we'll start and we'll be raised where Christ is by just this revelation. The, 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 I believe the other thing that I want you to understand is that resurrection confirms us as believers to be justified. It confirms us as believers to be justified. When we read the book of Romans 5, then we go to Romans 4.25. Romans 5.1, the Bible speaks of us being justified. The Bible speaks of our justification. Romans 5 verses 1. Masakarabagandis. Rakusakotabigandis. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. The message of resurrection confirms us to be justified. Therefore, since we are justified, acquitted, and declared righteous and given a right standing with God through faith. I want you to get this. I wanted you to get these words. That what is justification? Justif justification is our acquisition. Our declaration to be righteous. And our being given a right standing with God. That is what justification is. In simple words, you've been made just as if you had not seen. When we look at Romans 4, 25, now that's where we see that resurrection confirms us as justified as believers. Verses, verses 25, we, who was betrayed and put to death because of our misdeeds. Who is this that was betrayed? The person that was betrayed is Jesus Christ and was put to death because of our misdeeds and was raised to secure our justification. Jesus Christ was raised to secure your justification as a believer. The reason why you are justified, the reason why you, you are, you've been made just as if you had no sin is because there is a person that raised, was raised from the dead and he secured, my God. He secured your justification. He secured your acquittal. He secured our acquittal, making our account balanced and absolving us from all guilt before God. I just love what Amplified is saying that who was betrayed and put to death because of our misdeeds. We, we were dead in our trespasses. That is what the Bible says in the book of Ephesians 2 from verses 1. That we were dead in our trespasses. But there is a person. 
My God who was betrayed and put to death because of those trespasses, because of those sins, because of those iniquities and, and was raised and he secured a place for us. That is the place of justification. So you have because of resurrection, you have been made justified as a true believer. My God. Let me finish by saying this. Resurrection. And this, this is something that will happen. He is now confirming the resurrection of the future. Resurrection. Or oh, believers in resurrection will also receive new bodies because, because of resurrection. This is when we talk about the future resurrection. The Bible says when we look at 1 Corinthians 15, 51 and verses 52. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 and 52. The Bible says, take notice, I tell you a mystery, a secret truth, an event decreed by the hidden purpose or counsel of God. We shall not all fall asleep in death, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the sound of the last trumpet call, I want you to get that, at the sound of the last trumpet call, for a trumpet will sound and the dead in Christ will be raised imperishable, free and immune from decay. And we shall be changed and transformed. We shall be changed and transformed. This is why it speaks of us receiving new bodies. And this will happen in the future resurrection. But I don't want to dwell on that for now. But I want you to understand something. By the virtue of resurrection. When we look at the resurrection of Jesus Christ, there are evidences that Jesus Christ lived by the virtue that he was resurrected. One of the evidences is, we've seen in the book of Matthew 28, there was an empty tomb. My God, there was an empty tomb. His body also bared the marks of the nails that, that was pierced through him. And even he, he appeared before people noticing and they noted that for sure this man has resurrected from the dead. And this is, is taking us to the next resurrection. And that is the resurrection of believers. And this is where I'll dwell. Then we will, we will finish it there. Because the desire of God is for believers not to stay a dead life, but for believers to stay a life that is alive. My God, I don't know even what I have said. But the, the, the Lord desires that we live a revived life. The Lord desires that we live. You know, I was speaking to some people somewhere and I told them, we are crying about revival. Like revival is an event that will come and then go away. Revival is not an event. Revival is a state that believers are supposed to take and they are supposed to take it every day of their lives. And the reason why we have been resurrected, Karo Sabagandis, my God, my God, Jesus. The Bible says, when we look at the book of Ephesians 2, from verses 15, the Bible says, by abolishing his own crucified flesh, the enmity caused by the law with its decrees and ordinances, which he annulled, that he from the two might create in himself one new man, one new quality of humanity out of the two, so making peace. This is what happens. This is what happens when we speak about spiritual resurrection of believers. This is what Jesus Christ did. 
Jesus Christ abolished in his own crucified flesh the enmity that was being caused by the law and its decrees and ordinances and he annulled them. God, that from the two he might create in himself one new man. We've been made one with Christ Jesus. And right now, there is peace. There is no longer enmity. When we talk about resurrection, Jesus Christ has already resurrected from the dead. And so when, when we talk about you as a believer, receiving him as your personal savior, what happens is, this is what happens. You become one with Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is a person that has resurrected from the dead. So it means that in him there is no death. Carosa Baganes. In him, death has been abolished. So if he is living in you, your life is supposed to be a new life every day. You're supposed to stay in a state that is alive every day. Holy Spirit of the living God. That is what God desires. When we look at the book of Colossians 2 from verses 13, Matosa kera garira magandis, rakosi abeto siatosa megandis, marosa kira bagandis. The Bible says, and you who are dead in trespasses and in the circumcision of your flesh, your sensuality, your your sensuality, your sinful carnal nature, God brought you to life together with Christ, having freely forgiven us all our transgression. Today you are alive because Christ was raised from the dead. Today you are alive and this is the life that Christ expects all of us to live. You know one of the things that I want you to understand and this is one of the wrong things that has happened in the body of Christ. The body of Christ has taught us experiences but it has not taught us doctrine but experiences without doctrine. We, that is why we have so many lost children in the church. I love what my pastor says, the reason why we have so many people in pampas and not in purpose is because we have not been taught doctrine, but doctrine is supposed to be taught together with our experiences. When doctrine is taught together with our experiences, there is a life that oozes out from such a message. And I want to let you know, child of God, we were dead in our trespasses, in our circumcision of our flesh but through Christ Jesus we've been brought back to life we've been brought back to life and the life that we've been given God desires that we stay in that state all the days of our lives Casabarandos. the Bible says the famous scripture that we always quote in the book of 2 Corinthians 5 from verses 17 I'm about to bring this down in the next few minutes. The Bible says, therefore, if any person is engrafted in Christ, if any person is engrafted in Christ, the people that, that have done agriculture understand this message. And I want don't to dwell it there. But if therefore, if any person is engrafted in Christ, the Messiah, he is now a new creation, a new creature altogether, the old previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away. Behold, the fresh and new has come right now by the virtue that you are a born again believer. The old previous moral and spiritual condition is passed away. The person that was dead is passed away. The old nature is passed away. Right now you carry a new nature within you and that is the nature of God within you. The Bible speaks of this in the book of 1 Peter that we are the divine nature of God is we are carrying it with us. The fresh and the new has come. The fresh 
and the new has come and it is here with us. You, you are no longer the old man. You are now a new creation and God expects this, this is my insistence because of where I want to take us. God expects that we live in our new. God expects us that we live in our new. And I say this when I was starting this portion that there were evidences when Christ was risen from the dead. We saw a tomb, an empty tomb. We saw his body when he appeared before, before, before. Uh, this man that was doubting when he appeared before him. I'm forgetting his name. Thomas, the, the doubting Thomas, when, when he appeared before him and Thomas touches his hands, he touches his body where, where the spear went through and he confirms that for sure this man has risen from the dead. We see evidences. And I want to let you know, as a believer, there is supposed to be evidences that you also have been resurrected from the dead. There is supposed to be an evidence. And one of the evidence is you are, you are dead to sin. And you are, there is a result of a new life. My God. You are dead to sin. One of the evidences that today I want to let you know this is, I'm, I'm, I'm also a culprit because sometimes we, we continue sinning and there is a minister that sings and asks us that if you are filled with the Holy Ghost, you are, you are tongue speaking but you still go back to sinning. What kind of tongues did you receive? But I came today so that we may come back to the place of our new life as believers because God for revival Revival to start. Revival will not start in the world. Revival will start in the church. And one of the evidences of resurrection is we are dead to sin and we walk in the newness of life. The Bible speaks of this in the book of Romans 6, 11. My God, Zaganda Magandis, Holy Spirit, help us today. We desire to, new the, to live the new life that, is, uh, that, that, that we've been given by Jesus Christ. God so Romans 6, 11, this is what the Bible says. Karabasira bagandis, rasoko tabira megandis. The Bible says in the same way, we count, in the same way, count yourselves to dead to sin, but alive to God. In Christ Jesus. Count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. You are out there. You've been struggling with sin day in, day out. My God, we are coming to you. The second evidence, the second evidence that I want you to get is. We, we receive a new master. We receive a new master. We look at the second Corinthians 5 from verses 15. Spiritual resurrection. The spiritual resurrection of a believer. Jesus becomes the master of our lives. And that is what is supposed to happen. Not instead of living for yourself. And living to serve your own self. And living to serve your own staff. We receive a new master. When our lives are resurrected. The Bible says, 2 Corinthians 5.15. And he died for all. So that all, those, so that all those who live might live no longer to and for themselves. And he died for all, so that all those who live might live no longer to and for themselves. The reason why you continue living a life that is of yourself is because you've not yet received this person. And spiritual resurrection has not yet occurred fully in your life. 
And some of us, we were, we, we were dead and we were brought back. We were brought into, into, into the kingdom of God. And we were so happy when, when we got born again. We, were, we, we, we used to attend every fellowship. We used to do things for God in those days. Those days, everything about God made sense. You, no one could tell you not to attend a church in those days when you got born again. But right now, it is a struggle. And the other things have become the master of your lives. Praying, taking time to pray is a struggle. Why? Because sleep has become your master. Studying the word of God has become a struggle. Why? Because the things of this world has become your master. But today, the Lord is calling us back to understand that we have a new master. Who is Jesus Christ? He died for all so that all those who live might not live no longer for themselves. But to and for him who died and was raised. Again for their sake. He, he died and was raised again for our sake. So that we might not live for ourselves. So that we might not live for ourselves. But so that we might live for him. It's a question that you're supposed to ask yourself as a believer. Whom have you been living for? If you can answer that question. You know there, there, there is a returning back. Have you been living for your boyfriend or your girlfriend? What have you been living for? What have you been living for? Whom have you been living for? We have a new master. If our lives have been spiritually resurrected, this is, this is what will happen when we talk about the whole thing about revival. This is the entirety of it. The third evidence, we receive a new purpose. We receive a new life purpose. Look at the book of Colossians 3 from verses 1. Spiritual resurrections shifts our minds from focusing on the temporal things and our attention is focused on the eternal matters of heaven and the eternal things. The reason why so many of us as believers, we, we are dead, we are dead, we are not alive because, because after we got born again, we started living for our own ambition. We started living. We came to God because we expected him to give us things. We expected God to, to give us things. And today, you can no longer pray. You can no longer go for fellowships. You can no longer tarry even for 30 minutes in the place of prayer. Because maybe you received what you, you are looking for from God. But that, was not, that is not the intention of God. The intention of God is for us to live a life that is spiritually alive all the days of our lives. And we need to understand, the Bible says, if then you have been raised with Christ to a new life, that sharing his resurrection from the dead, aim at and seek the rich eternal treasures that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Verses 2. And set your minds and keep them set on what is above. The higher things, not on the things that are on earth. We, we set our minds. Verses 2 says we set our minds on the things that are above. The higher things there are higher things, not on the things that are on this earth. The things of this earth are temporal. The things of this earth are temporal. Child of God, I want to let you know that revival, the awakening that we are talking about, 
will because the reason why we speak about a new sound a new sound will come this, this when, when we talk about a new sound coming a new sound is a new teaching and one of the teaching that can never fade away is the teaching of, of the message of the gospel and part of the message of the gospel is the message of resurrection and resurrection has to be taught in its fullness and in its entirety so that we might be able to come back to the place of being alive in Christ Jesus we've cried about revival and revival is not coming out We've cried about revival because we think that revival will come from, from a far place and come to us. But I came to let you know that revival, as I said, it's not an event. It is a state that God wants us to live in. It is a state because the, the emanation of the power of God, the Bible says that that same power that raised Christ from the dead is at work within you. So, and that same power is able to quicken your mortal bodies. So it means that revival is not coming from outside. Revival is supposed to come from your inside. It's until you surrender your life and tell God, God, I am tired living a life that is not pleasing you. I am tired of living a life of struggle. I am tired of living a life of of addictions. I am tired of living a life that, that, that has no sense. Living a life that is defeated when you get to a place of tiredness and tell God by the power that is at work within me, may you cause a resurrection of my life, my spiritual. Let my life be resurrected and God will start to do that. That is what Paul tells, tells the, the, the people in the book of Romans 8. I just want to read that scripture. Masosa Bagandos. Resusa Bagandos. The book of Romans 8. Let me just get the scripture right. In the name of Jesus. Karurabas Sota Bagandis. The Bible says, Therefore, brothers, from verses, from verses 9, you, you, however, are not controlled. By the sinful nature, but by the spirit. If the spirit of God lives in you, but you're not living the life of the flesh, you are living the life of the spirit. And if the Holy Spirit of God really dwells within you, directs and controls you, but if anyone does not possess the Holy Spirit of God, of Christ, he is none of his does not belong to Christ, is not truly a child of God. That's a stand. But if Christ lives in you, then although your natural body is dead by reason of sin and guilt, the spirit is alive because of the righteousness that he imputes to you. Verse 11. And if the spirit of him who raised up Jesus from the dead, dwells in you. Then he who raised up Christ from the dead, then he who raised up Christ Jesus from the dead, will also restore to, to life your mortal, short lived, perishable bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Let's say in verses 11. If the spirit of him who raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised up Christ Jesus from the dead will also restore to life your mortal bodies. That is my prayer for somebody out there. You've been dead. Your, your walk with God has been dead. Your spiritual walk with God has been dead today. We came to declare life. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is a life in him. He, he, him that raised up Christ from the dead. Already if you are a born again believer. He is 
is in you. He is dwelling in you. And he is able to restore to life your mortal bodies. He is able to restore to life your spiritual walk with God. He is able to do it. And you just believe. Sometimes faith is not looking on the things. When we talk about faith, looking on the things that are unseen. Is faith looks in the inside. Because when we, when we look at the book of Ephesians that our God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what we can think or even imagine according to the power that is at work within you. The power is at work within you. I want you to believe that the power of resurrection is not out there. It is not a power that will come upon you one day if you are a born again believer. The power of resurrection the Bible says in the book of Ephesians 1 verses 20 that that same power which he exerted in Christ Jesus is at work within us and today I want you to activate the power of resurrection that is at work within you in the name of Jesus Gazatayabagandos the same power is at work within you child of God it is at work within you and wherever you are I want you to open up your mouth if you can speak in the language of the spirit start to activate the power of resurrection that is within you in the name of Jesus because today I am believing God that you will no longer walk again in sin you will not walk again in your your own nature my God you are you are dying to sin you are dying to the life of this world and you are coming alive saga saga maganda saga saga meganda sokata samaganda saga tako samaganda reka sata pera raganda mako sata pera reganda my God we can somebody's motorbike in the name of Jesus my attire me us. let there be revival let there be revival let there be revival in somebody's life let somebody come back to life in the name of Jesus I announce spiritual kayataya spiritual dryness is coming to an end spiritual burnouts are coming to an end we announce in Jesus name the men and women are going back to the place of intimacy with God men and women are coming back to the first love of God in the name of Jesus we call men back my God by the power of resurrection we call men back to life we call men back to life we call men back to life every walk with God that has been dead we call it back to life in the name of Jesus oh the Bible says the book of Psalms 40 the book of Psalms 40 I want us to raise to raise a cry because in heaven, there, there is a heart cry in heaven that men and women might come back to a place of living. We should be living. We should not be dead. We should be living. So many of us lie to ourselves that we are alive. But let me tell you, child of God, if you are alive, there are things that you may not be doing. If you are alive, there are things, if you are alive in Christ Jesus, there are things that should go away. I love what my brother taught last Sunday and he spoke about small things. There, there are small things in our lives that if we are alive in Christ Jesus, they have to have died and by the power that is of resurrection some of these small things things like unforgiveness things like bitterness things like pride when we are alive in Christ Jesus when we are spiritually resurrected and we have a new master 
pride cannot take control of our lives because we will always know that there is a master in our lives. Secret sins will not take hold of our lives because we are now, when we are alive in Christ Jesus, we understand that we've been passed from death to life by the virtue that we've been resurrected and the power of resurrection is at work within us. My God, the Bible says, and David declares that I waited patiently and expectantly from the Lord and he inclined to me and heard my cry. Masakarabagandos. He drew me out of a horrible pit, a pit of tumult and of destruction, out of the miry clay, froth and slime, and set my feet upon a rock, standing my step and establishing my goings. David waited patiently upon the Lord. I want to let you know, in any pit that you are in, if the power, if God, by the power of resurrection, was able to raise Jesus back again to life, that, that, that power of resurrection is able to take you out of any pit that you may be in, child of God. Whatever pit that you may be in today, the Lord is able by the power that is of resurrection. The Lord is able to take you out of any pit. There is no decadence our God is not able to take us out from. There is no sin that our God is not able to take us out from. There is no struggle. There is no weakness that our God is not able to break. There is no addiction that our God is not able to break and today we announce if you are watching us and you are in a pit of destruction you are watching us and you are in a miry clay we announce in Jesus name Jesus appears at the, at, the, at, the, at the tomb of Lazarus and he announces and he, because of the people that were with him he says thank you Lord because I always know that you hear me but after thanking God he raised a cry and announced Lazarus come forth come out out of that tomb and today that is my cry for somebody that is watching me and you are in a tomb you are in a pit of destruction I came to announce that may you come forth in the name of Jesus come out of that addiction come out of that struggle come out of that weakness come out of that hardship in the name of Jesus Father we thank you we bless your name. Let your power continue causing changes in the lives of your people. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, Casa Bagandis. Holy Spirit of the living God. My God, I'm here and I can feel the heavens are already open. Wherever you are, watching us online, the heavens are already open in the name of Jesus. There is grace that has been released upon individuals to come up of their pits, to come out of their tombs, to come out of their dead situations. In the name of Jesus Christ, we announce that even them that, are, that, that their marriages are dead. We call those marriages back to life. We announce them that are dead financially. We announce financial hardships are broken in the name of Jesus. Them that are in debts, we we announce those debts have been cancelled in the name of Jesus. We announce in the name of Jesus, Spirit of the living God.
Cause Kayareba Sia. Cause arising up. Cause arising up of every situation that your people might be in. In the name of Jesus. Spirit of the living God. Kaya Bagando Basia Bigandas. We prophesy to the four winds and we announce let breath Kazosa Begandis come to every dry situation. Let there be life in the name of Jesus. Let the soil life of God, even to those that are sick. We announce in the name of Jesus Christ If you are sick in your body And you are watching us We announce let that tumor dry up right now Let that headache disappear right now Let that stomachache disappear right now Stomach ulcers We command you disappear right now In the name of Jesus Father Kasayaba We announce life kaya rara sataya loya rara sataya maya rara sataya ria rara sataya we announce life kaya rabe life in amaya taya life in rara rosa pa oh shaketa bayandas may somebody leave again may somebody leave again May somebody leave again. It, it might have seemed that God was silent. It might have seemed so. The same happened when Jesus Christ went to the grave on Friday. On Saturday, there was silence. But on Sunday, there was a rattle. And today, we are announcing in the name of Jesus the coming to an end of that season that you are in we announce let there be a rattling let there be a rattle in the name of Jesus and may you come out may you come out of your grave may you come out of that pit may you come out may you come out in the name of Jesus Zakaya Rabagandes Rekaya Baragandes Reko Sataya Father thank you Maya Tuya Raba Sataya Rekataya Rebataya Robataya Ripataya Rabetaya Rubataya Sebataya Ripataya Rabataya Ripataya Thank you for the life Thank you for the life Thank you for the life that you are releasing upon your children Thank you for the life Thank you, thank you, Jesus. We announce hope. Somebody out there, you are hopeless and or you are about to give up. I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, There is still hope, for there is a hope of a tree that at the sense of water it will shoot, its leaf will shoot up again. And I announce. Let the, let the sensing of water appear in your life. And let there be a shooting up again in the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a word. I tell you the truth. We, we, we are already blessed by, by that word. That the spirit of resurrection, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is at work in us. Oh, Father, we thank you for such a word. We thank you even for your servant. We pray, God, that may you, may you replenish him, oh God. May you minister unto him the same way that he has ministered unto us. What a word, oh God. And we pray that may life, ah, may life once again be made alive in us. If you're watching there from home and you know, you've heard this message and and you've not given your life to Christ. This is a very good opportunity to give your life to Christ. Because without Christ, without the spirit of resurrection, you are dead in sin. But the spirit of resurrection makes you dead to sin. So if you're there and you're saying, Pastor, I've heard the message. And I want to give my life to Christ. Uh, this is your opportunity. I just want you to raise up your hand and say that Lord Jesus... 
come into my life. Make me alive again in Christ. I believe in my heart that you are the Lord Jesus. And now publicly I confess that you are my Lord and Savior. May the spirit of resurrection come upon me and make me alive in you forevermore. Father, I thank you for them that have made this prayer. And I pray, Jehovah Jesus, that as sure as they have declared, may the spirit of life visit them and may this spirit make them alive so that they can fulfill the purposes of God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I know the giving details are on the screen. They're just somewhere around here on the screen. If you're giving through uh, M-Pesa, you can go to uh, Lipana M-Pesa, buy goods and services, still number 32, 59, 59. We're not selling anything. It's just that that's the platform that we, we use to, to uh, receive our offerings and our tithes. So you can go to Lipana M-Pesa, buy goods, till number 32, 59, 59. You're going to see Life Church International Imuru. Or if you're willing to, to or if you want to use M-Pesa, instead uh, you can use MPESA number 0729 I'm going to say that again 0729 you're going to see the name William Minor and your offerings are going to be received let us pray for those offerings Father we thank you for the giving of your people and as sure as the word has come powerfully that our financial lives are going to be made alive again because of the same spirit of resurrection that is at work in us. We declare, oh God, that over them that are giving right now, may life visit their finances and may their finances be alive. May they experience financial freedom by reason, oh God, of being alive in you. Thank you for watching. I know you have, we've had an amazing time and I know you have had an amazing time too. We'll meet together next Sunday for another moment of being in God's presence and being edified by his word and I know that our lives shall never be the same again. So from us at Life Church International Limuru, it's a happy Sunday, a blessed week to you, a prosperous time in the presence of God and may God be with you forevermore. Amen, amen, amen. Kwaheri from Life Church Limuru. I've searched the world And it couldn't feel me Mine's empty praise And treasures of fate Are never enough The new came along And put me back together and every desire is now satisfied hearing your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you.
small and you still call me friend yeah cause the god of the mountain is the god of the valley and not to the place you must see in grace find me again sing there is no